Hello students and welcome to the lesson on the updated Carel the robot. So before we get too deep into the lesson, let's just look at a basic example of the old robot and um, I'll show you all of the limit I'll review, remind you of all the limitations. So here's Carel the robot in this world right here. And I'm gonna type in some basic instructions. So I've made a, a your robot called uh, Simpleton and let's say um, I tell him to, I start him in at 2-1, and then I'm going to tell him to uh, pick a beeper. Okay. So 2-1 is right here, and, if I, and there's no beeper there in that world, so it's going to come as no surprise that he is going, the program is going to run, and then he, the robot is going to have an error shut off. So let's see. There it is, and then he tries to pick up a beeper. Of course, there's no beeper there, so he's going to crash. So, nothing new there. Now, let's say that I just tell him to move forward. I'm, I actually don't want to delete that. I'm going to comment it out. Okay. So now I'm going to have him move forward three times. Compile, run. Here he goes. He's going to move once, and that's fine. Move twice. And when he tries to move three times, he's going to run into that wall. So um, that's a bit of a problem. Okay. So this is the limitation of the old robot, of the old Carell. Now, let, let me show you a new feature. So I'm just going to comment this out so I can show you a better robot here. So this is called Robot. And let's name him Carell equals new robot. Same parameters as before. And instead of telling him to pick a beeper, I'm going to have him do some decisions. So for example, I can say, I can add an if statement if Carell dot uh, next to a beeper, then pick it. Otherwise, move. Well, maybe not that either. Okay. Otherwise, let's have him do nothing. Let's have him move forward regardless. Move, move. And then I can have another instruction here that says if Carell dot front is clear, uh, move. Otherwise, turn left. Move. Carell dot move. Now I'm making some minor mistakes here. I should be saying Carell dot move. Carell dot turn left because this is main here, we're controlling a specific robot object. We are not um, inheriting anything. So, okay. so now compile and run. And when I run, we can see the new and improved robot. So, he knows that he's not next to a beeper, so he's not going to do anything. Then he recognizes that wall, so he turns left, and then uh, he moves forward. Okay? So you see this robot here, this robot class, is a little bit smarter than the old robot class. The old robot class can only do things. It can't really test things. Um, here, we're, we're able to make decisions. Carol can check if it's next to a beeper. And respond accordingly. He can check if the fr the in front of him is a wall or not, and he can respond accordingly. If it is, then if it's not, there's no wall, then he will move. If it is, then he'll turn left and he'll do something a little bit differently. Okay. So um, this is a very brief intro into the new robot. What I really want to show you is the documentation. Okay. Now the robot class comes along with the book that we've been using. Um, this is just something that the authors of the textbook provided. So um, 
our, our responsibility here is to understand what they've provided and then extend on it and build on it and make it some, into something better. So these are the documentation that came with it. Hopefully you were able to download it. Uh, if not, see one of the other videos or ask your teacher. But you can see here on the left side, uh, we can click on, let's say, um, your robot. And this will tell us um, all the things that we need to know. It, we can see here that there's these certain fields that should be very familiar to you at this point. Two different constructors. There's actually a second constructor that allows us to specify the color. Um, and all kinds of features here. Um, the ones that we've been using most commonly are move, pick beeper, put beeper. But you can see there's a bunch of other stuff too and we'll explore that later. Now if you click on the robot class, uh, first I want to point your attention to um, the upper left hand corner here and this shows the hierarchy, the inheritance. Robot inherits from your robot which inherits from something called observable and object. We'll get into that later. But the main part here is that robot inherits from your robot and it provides some additional features. So you can see here um, the constructors are still the same but it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Boolean functions. And the textbook refers to these as predicates. It, it's a way for you to ask a question, ask a yes, no question, and get an answer in response. Okay? So this will return true if, the, if it has any beepers. This will return true if it's facing east, facing north, and so on. Then we also have a very useful function that will tell you if it's facing a wall or not and whether it's next to whether it's sitting on top of a beeper and later for some fancier stuff when we have a world with multiple robots we can check if there is a robot next to it okay. and then if you scroll down there's more details down here as to as um, to what the function does so you should get familiar with this whenever you wonder if there's a function whether you can do certain things or not with a built-in robot you should check these documentation um, if as later on when we add on to this when we build a, you know newer robots we'll be able to make our own documentation file and we'll be able to actually add to these html you can see here there's a, there's a world class and we've used this before we've used things like um, read world uh, we can actually remove remove walls on the fly if we really wanted to we're not going to do that yet um, and we can you know set visible so these are some very useful things as well that belong to the work to the world class. So, um, main idea here: we have a new robot that we can use from the authors of the textbook, and you need to fully understand it by um, making yourself familiar with and spending some time, you know, reading, keeping these documentation handy. Okay. Right, I'm going to end this video here and start another one that shows you how to extend and build on top of these ideas. Thank you for watching and.